So if you didn't tune into last night's debate, let me just say it was an absolute bloodbath. And one person was a definitive, universally recognized loser. And that person is Mike Bloomberg. And the way that you know that he is a loser is if there's no way for the mainstream media to spin it. And I watched a little bit of MSNBC, something that nobody should ever do. And even they were saying that Mike Bloomberg was the loser. So you can't possibly spin this. You can't suggest that he came out on top. This was a bad, bad, brutal debate for Mike Bloomberg. Uh, because not only did he have to defend himself when it comes to stop and frisk, he had to defend himself when it comes to redlining, sexual harassment, why he hasn't released his tax returns, why he has all of this wealth and whether or not it's earned and deserved. And it was so bad that after the debate, his Wikipedia page was updated and it claims that he was murdered <laughs> by Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Joe Biden. And guys, <laughs> he lost so bad, his campaign put out a statement. You don't do that unless you got blown the fuck out. And it reads, Mike was just warming up tonight. We fully expect Mike will continue to build on tonight's performance when he appears on the stage in South Carolina next Tuesday. Yeah, you better hope so, because if he has more performances like that, it doesn't matter how much money you spend. You can spend $10 billion of your own wealth, but that kind of a performance shows voters not only are you incompetent and you have zero charisma, but if you go up against Donald Trump, He's going to have a field day like he's going to enjoy it like what he did to Hillary Clinton on that debate stage um, in bringing on Bill Clinton's uh, sexual assault accusers and calling out Hillary Clinton's record on trade, you know, basically trying to attack her from the left. Imagine what he can do with Mike Bloomberg. There's no way he'd be able to maintain any lead that he has currently over Donald Trump on a national debate stage. Like, this shows voters this dude is a loser and he can't hold his own. So we're going to go through a couple of clips here, and I'm going to show you how one by one Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, even Amy Klobuchar took turns dunking on Mayor Bloomberg. And the only person who really withheld their fire was Pete Buttigieg. I mean, he threw in a couple of jabs here and there, but it's clear that this, you know, opportunist is jockeying for a position in Bloomberg's administration, possibly, or a VP position, and, you know, whatever. But the people who took shots at him, they got in some really good blows, and they landed. And the first one is Bernie Sanders. He explained why Bloomberg is poised to lose to Donald Trump if he were to win the nomination. In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. What our movement is about is bringing working class people together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, around an agenda that works for all of us and not just the billionaire class. And that agenda says that maybe, just maybe, we should join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care to all people as a human right, raise that minimum wage to a living wage of 15 bucks an hour, and have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry because their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet and the need to combat climate change. Those are some of the reasons we have the strongest campaign to defeat Donald Trump. So and that is such a great point. If you want to win, you have to increase voter turnout. If you don't recognize that, you can't beat Donald Trump because Democrats for too long have just been fixated on winning over moderate Republicans and these suburban white voters. But listen... It's not just this fixed portion of the electorate that will vote in every single election. See, when turnout is high, Democrats win. When it's low, they lose. Hillary Clinton lost because she couldn't excite younger people. Individuals stood home, and a lot of people did flip from Democrats to Republicans to support Donald Trump. But I mean, if you want to win, the best way, the safest bet is to turn out the base. And how are you going to turn out the base? How are you going to energize black and brown people if you were the mayor who had this explicitly racist policy where you threw black people against the wall and frisked them. Like, there's a video from the New York Times with an individual named Taekwon, and he explained how he was stopped four to five times per month during the stop and frisk years. 
four to five times per month. You can't win with that kind of a record. People of color will not come out and vote for you. People who are anti-racist, who don't believe in your disgusting, discriminatory policies, will not come out and vote for you. And when it comes to the issue of racial profiling, they actually stayed on this for a while. I'm shocked that MSNBC actually talked about the audio that Benjamin Dixon released, um, or at least popularized, where he explained how, look, we have to over-police black neighborhoods because that's where all the crime is. Like, I'm genuinely surprised that the media did their job in that respect. But uh, Joe Biden jumped in and explained how racial profiling that we saw from Mike Bloomberg, it really is disgusting. It's evil. The mayor makes an interesting point. The mayor says that he has a great record, that he's done these wonderful things. Well, the fact of the fact of the matter is he has not managed his city very, very well when he was there. He didn't get a whole lot done. He had stop and frisk, throwing a folk close to five million young black men up against the wall. And when we came along in our administration, the President Obama, and said we're going to send in a moderator to a mediator to stop it, he said that's unnecessary. So I we we're going to get a chance to talk about the mayor's record. But in terms of who is best prepared to beat Donald Trump, look at your poll and what it says. Now, what Bloomberg tried to do was feign ignorance here. He tried to make it seem as if, you know, he didn't really know about what Stop and Frisk was doing, how he had the NYPD basically terrorizing communities of color. But that's a lie. That is a complete lie. He knew what was happening, and he refused to end stop and frisk until, I believe, a judge ordered him to. Now, Elizabeth Warren actually got him there on that lie and claimed, no, you knew exactly what this was. Targeting black and brown people wasn't some type of unintended consequence. That was exactly what you wanted to do as the mayor of of New York City. So he really tried to wiggle out of the corner that he was backed into and none of the Democrats were having it. Nobody would let him out. And there was a moment where, uh, moving on a little bit, where Mike Bloomberg was asked whether or not he deserved or earned the money that he has. He's worth over $50 billion. And Bernie Sanders had just the perfect response to what he said because he answered, yes, I did earn that. But look what Bernie Sanders said in response. You know what, Mr. Bloomberg, wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well. That was just brilliant. Um, and it communicates to people that Bernie Sanders knows about the value of just normal workers. We take for granted the people who work at Walmart. We take for granted just the people who are working these nine to five jobs and they haven't seen a raise, they're struggling to get by, they can ba barely pay their rent, and Bernie Sanders is demonstrating that he's in touch with what Americans need, not some oligarch who's buying ads, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars worth, that's just disgusting. So I love how each candidate took turns dunking on him, but I've got to hand it to Elizabeth Warren. It was really her who landed the knockout punch, because what we saw here was just it was masterful, and I think that if you are ever going to be in a debate, you have to watch this performance, watch what Elizabeth Warren did, and pay close attention because this is how you expose someone who was a fraud. This is what she did when it comes to the sexual harassment allegations that came up to Mike Bloomberg. Several former employees have claimed that your company was a hostile workplace for women. When you were confronted about it, you admitted making sexually suggestive remarks, saying, quote, that's the way I grew up. In a lawsuit in the 1990s, according to the Washington Post, one former female employee alleged that you said, quote, I would do you in a second. Should Democrats expect better from their nominee? Let me, let me say a couple things, and have, if I can have my full minute and a, qu a quarter, thank you. Um, I have no tolerance for the kind of behavior that the Me Too movement, movement has exposed. And anybody that does anything wrong in our company, we investigate it. And if it's appropriate, they're gone that day. But let me tell you what I do in my company and my foundation and in city government when I was there. In my foundation, the person that runs it's a woman. 70% of the people there are women. <clears throat> in my company, lots and lots of women have big responsibilities. They get paid exactly the same as men. And in my um, uh, in City Hall, the person that's the top person, my deputy mayor was a woman and 40 percent of our commissioners were women. I am very proud of the fact 
that th about uh, two weeks ago, we were awarded, uh, we were voted the uh, most, the, the best place to work, second best place in America. <laughs> if that doesn't say something about our employees and how happy they are, I don't know what does. Senator Warren, you've been critical of Mayor Bloomberg on this issue. Yes, I have. And I hope you heard what his defense was. I've been nice to some women. <laughs> that just doesn't cut it. The mayor has to stand on his record. And what we need to know is exactly what's lurking out there. He has gotten some number of women, dozens, who knows, to sign non-disclosure agreements, both for sexual harassment and for gender discrimination in the workplace. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? We have a very few non-disclosure agreements. How, how many Let is that? Let me finish. How many is that? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be, agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. They signed those agreements, so, and we'll live with it. On. So wait, but, when you say it is up to, I just want to be clear. Some is how many? And, and, when you, and when you say they signed them and they wanted them, if they wish now to speak out and tell their side of the story about what it is they allege, that's now okay with you? You're releasing them on television tonight? Se Senator, no. Is that right? Senator, that right? Tonight? Senator, the company and somebody else, in this case, a man or a woman, or could be more than that, they decided when they made an agreement that they wanted to keep it quiet for everybody's no. interest. They signed the agreements, and that's what we're going to live I'm with. I'm sorry. Really no, the question is, are I the women bound by being muzzled by you? And you could release them from that immediately. Because understand, this is not just a question of the mayor's character. This is also a question about electability. We are not going to beat Donald Trump with a man who has who knows how many non-disclosure agreements and the drip, drip, drip of stories of women saying they have been harassed okay. and discriminated against. That's not what we do as Democrats. Now, you can see that he was visibly uncomfortable because there was no way that he could respond to not look like a horrible human being right there. She had him backed into a corner. And as I'm watching this, you know, I'm loving and I, I like that she's dunking on Mike Bloomberg. But the question is, where was this Elizabeth Warren at the last three or four debates? Like, if we saw this, there's no way that she would be in the position that she's in currently in this overall race where she has a 1 in 100 chance of getting a majority of pledged delegates and winning the nomination. That's according to 538. So, I mean, if she brought this heat at previous debates and didn't kind of just, like, fade into the background... She would be excelling right now. But I mean, getting back to Mike Bloomberg, that was just embarrassing. And I mentioned this in my main debate breakdown video, but I don't know who it was, if it was a journalist or whatnot on Twitter, who basically said that they were at an official Bloomberg campaign debate watching party, and there were like visible groans, and they really didn't like what was happening because Elizabeth Warren, you know, was kind of destroying him there. How do you respond? There's no way to respond, right? There's just no way to respond to that. Everything she said there was just perfection. And I think that she probably prepared so much that she even anticipated responses and knew exactly what to say to hit him and thought through different scenarios of how he might answer this. And I mean, how can the question is after seeing all of this, how can you still support Mike Bloomberg if you were backing him because of name recognition based off of those ads, the answer is I don't think you can. And look, even Amy Klobuchar dunked on Mike Bloomberg when the issue of why he hasn't released his tax returns came up. And I, I thought that she handled this phenomenally. It just takes us a long time. Unfortunately or fortunately, oh, I comment on that? fortunately, I, I make a lot of money and we do business all around the world and we are preparing it. To the, the, the number of pages will probably be in the thousands of pages. I can't go to TurboTax, <laughs> but I put out my tax return every oh, year yeah. for okay, 12 years in City Hall. We will put out this one. 
It says, tells everybody everything they need to know about every investments that I make and where the money goes. And the biggest item is all the money I give away. And we list that, every single donation I make. And you can get that from our, from our foundation anytime you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at my husband in the front row that has to, like, do our taxes all the time. Um, we probably could go to TurboTax. And the point of this is I believe in transparency. I had a physical, by the way. It came out well. We might all be surprised if my blood pressure is lower than Mayor Pete's. That might really shock everyone out there. Um, and I think you should release your records uh, from your physical. Secondly, when it comes to tax returns, everyone up here has released their tax returns, Mayor. I think, and it is a major issue because the President of the United States has been hiding behind his tax returns, even when courts order them, him to come forward with those tax returns. And I, I think, I don't care how much money anyone has. I think it's great you got a lot of money, but I think you've got to come forward with your tax returns. So I don't usually say this, but good job, Amy Klobuchar. Now, now in case you missed it, um, he basically said that he's too rich to use TurboTax. Okay. And on top of that, he says that the biggest item in his taxes is all the money he gives away. So he's trying to cultivate goodwill with viewers, except save it. You're not using that money for causes because you have this altruistic belief that, you know, your money can make the world a better place. You're buying influence. You're buying endorsements. You're buying television advertisements. So save it. I don't care about your philanthropic endeavors. I couldn't care less. Okay? So the fact that you haven't released your tax returns yet when you knew you'd be running, it is a little embarrassing. And look, I don't necessarily care that much about tax returns. I think that his support for redlining, his lack of support for the minimum wage, which Bernie called out, uh, you know, his stop and frisk, his sexual harassment, that's all more persuasive. But I think that this is important in tying him to Donald Trump because he's trying to position himself as the person who is poised to beat Donald Trump. But what this portion of the debate proved was that how he's going to beat Donald Trump when he's very Trumpian himself. He's a billionaire. They both haven't released their tax returns. I thought it was great. It's it's a good strategic move. And um, yeah, so I don't know what to say. If I'm Mike Bloomberg, I'm never showing up to a debate again. I'm bowing out of this race. That was too embarrassing. Just save face, drop out, leave your legacy intact, although I don't know that that's possible after you've been exposed over the course of the last week. But I mean, within the first couple of minutes, he was already dead and they kept beating his dead carcass on that debate stage and it was just so glorious to watch. Like, this is really what we needed. We needed all of the candidates to take turns dunking on this oligarch because shame on anyone who thinks that they can buy their way into the White House, that they can buy our democracy. It's just... It's grotesque. It's morally reprehensible. Like, if you truly want to live in a democracy, then you can't allow billionaires to do what Mike Bloomberg is doing. He's buying endorsements. He's buying democracy. He's buying television ads. It's just, it's disgusting. Who can compete with that? What normal working class American who wants to be president can compete with a billionaire oligarch like that? And if he's able to prove that this is a suc successful strategy, then who who's going to run next? Is it going to be Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos or someone from the Walton family? Leon Cooperman, we can't allow this to happen. And so that's why the candidates needed to dismantle his campaign. And I think that they did as good as they possibly could have tonight. And let me say this, my expectations for Mike Bloomberg were very low, but he even underperformed my expectations. Like he did worse than I thought he possibly could have done. And even with my low expectations, regardless, I was still shocked at how bad this debate was for him. Horrible. Zero charisma, no policy substance. He's only on that debate stage because he thinks he's entitled to the White House because he has lots and lots of money. And this debate showed that you can't necessarily buy an election so easily, or at least if you're going to try to, there's going to be some heavy pushback. So kudos to all the candidates who took on this oligarch. Mike is a total loser. So don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.